folks. This morning soap is brought to us by Vanny Lay. This one here is named Jared. As you can tell, yes, it is a cologne scent. It, uh, this is fairly soft soap. It's going to be firm in the uh, container here. You can push your finger in it pretty easy. But once you, uh, I scrape it out with a baby spoon. It's very easy, soft to apply in a bowl. If you're bowl lathering, it's very soft soap. Not quite a croak, but not that far from it. Got the Allen Block. It's getting smaller. <laughs> no rubber band. <laughs> Humphrey's Witch Hazel. This one here is citrus scented. Got the uh, aftershave. Matching aftershave there. This one here it does not have alcohol in it. And uh, like most of her, uh, Monica's uh, aftershaves, you will have to give it a shake before you use it. The uh, shaver of the day. Decided to go with a star single edge this one here is an ebay find pretty inexpensive one it's got a gem blade in it teflon coated and i've got it whipped up here in a uh, salsa bowl with a uh, yaki brush cashmere knot <laughs> see a theme i like these kind of knots i also finally found a uh, Somebody that uh, has what I believe is the ghost knot that I've been hunting for. Oh, by the way, this is what I put my pre-shave soap in. It's a uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. It's methylated, unscented. But uh, anyway, I think I found somebody that will sell me. Found it by the way of Instagram, more or less. How you say it, by accident? Uh, at any rate, they sent me a message. Show me the knots that they had and notice one of them, but I'm pretty sure is the ghost knot that I've been looking for. Very, it's similar to the cashmere knot in that it's white, but the cashmere knots, how you say, got a little bit of an off white color to it. This one here would be more like a brilliant white. Help with the contrast with uh, the brush color. And uh, there are some Omega brushes that have those kind of knots that are very very much like what I would consider a ghost knot, a very brilliant white knot. And I uh, finally found somebody that would sell some to me. I've <laughs> been hunting for one for a while and it's not been the easiest. And it was just by the course of uh, viewing uh, postings on Instagram that this one here popped up. Quite happy with this. So it's coming by the way of China, so it's going to be a moment before I get it, as well as before I put it in a brush or two. So now I'm, uh, I guess you might say, on the hunt for more brushes to put knots in. And I have some, and I'm not too sure. There's one in particular. If you ever see those uh, vintage brush handles that are uh, resin clear, and then it's got the black glue that helps offset it, makes it look really cool. Uh, I have one of those. I just don't know. I don't have the black glue. <laughs> so I'll have to try to run that down or try to figure out how to how to make it look really nice. Like, sort of like Razor Rock's uh, BC, the black and clear. To me, I like that. It looks really cool. Thought I'd give it a try. Try my hand at it. See how it works out. Here we go. Guess you might say I've got a number of things that I like to give a try. And when I replace these knots, I don't, I just want some lather. <laughs> I don't, uh, in other words, have high expectations of polishing it up or uh, make it look as good as this. In other words, just basically just to get the knot in there without messing it up. Baby steps, if you will. And to me, the biggest step for me is just getting the knot out. That's the hardest part. Putting one back in to me is pretty easy. I'm don't think I've, my experience has been, it's been pretty easy to get the knot in. It's getting the old one out. That's where it's really a, a lot of work. So you can imagine the folks that re, uh, re knot your brushes. It's probably closer to, uh, uh, I guess you might say, um, something they very much enjoy doing. Because it is a wee bit of work. Unless they've come up with a better way of removing it than what I have, which is just using a Dremel tool with a bit 
to drill out the plastic, I mean, uh, not plastic, but the, the glue knot. Some of those glue knots are, face it, on a vintage brush, they've been around for a while. Don't know what they used back then, but some of that stuff is really hard. And um, removing it with my Dremel tool, that last one I did, it has a very distinct odor about it. Offensive. <laughs> it smelled bad. It did not want to be removed. Oddly enough, the um, knot doesn't, the, the bristles come out pretty easy, <laughs> but the glue doesn't. I am thinking, and I don't know for sure, whether I want to tackle this or not in the way of uh, finding a vintage brush that uh, the handle is made out of wood. And uh, I've seen some that look really nice when they're painted and whatnot. I just don't know if I'm up to tackling that task just yet. You've seen probably if you've looked at any of these pictures of the vintage brush, vintage brushes that are uh, got wooden handles, they have a tendency to crack, be cracked, and I don't know how to haven't quite fit it in my head how to, I guess you might say, repair the crack to make the handle viable to use again. I guess you might say I'm not trying to make um, the process too terribly drawn out. Don't mind spending some time on it, but not an enormous amount of time. You know how it is around here. It gets busy. Our um, short little vacation, I guess you might say, is coming up. If um, you may have missed the video where we talked about my wife and I are going to go uh, to San Antonio. And I live here in Oklahoma. And we're going to catch a train and head to San Antonio in hopes to catch a uh, football game. And uh, there's some question now whether or not the NFL and the Players Union, in other words, all three groups, I guess you might say, can get together and uh, work things out. The last I had read that this weekend might be the last weekend if they can't get details worked out, which means that next weekend <laughs> there won't be a game. <laughs> Look, this morning I haven't seen any more news about it, but... So far, the games will be are playing this weekend, but I haven't heard anything about if they worked out the details or not. But at any rate, we're still going to go. Even if there's not a game, there's plenty to do down there, San Antonio. A little bit of feedback, just a little. This one, this particular shaver was um, probably on the inexpensive side of things. It has a bit of a flaw to it. So far it does not seem to affect the shave, and I didn't think it would. But it took me a good long moment to figure out what was I seeing. I see something different about the shaver. I just couldn't put my finger on it for sure what was going on with it. And it's probably the reason why it's priced so inexpensively. Because it did take me a while. But I don't know in the camera if it's going to be that noticeable. There's one view right there. And that's where I noticed it first that view right there is when I noticed it next and trying to figure out what was going on with in other words is it bent on the handle is it tweaked one way or the other what was going on with it and it took me a while but this right here this corner I guess you might say this tab is bent downwards and that's the reason why it gives that appearance of uh, looking like it's going downhill 
And um, I have to say, so far, I have noticed any kind of uh, ill effect from that being like that. I didn't think it would affect the shave, but it does make the shaver look like it's bent at the handle, running downhill, if you will. I'm not going to do anything to correct it. It's fine the way it is. It shaves just fine. That's a pretty good shave. I didn't think it would, but I wanted to shave with it and make sure. Another piece of history. These shavers are getting to be pretty old. And the coating on it is still in pretty good shape. I don't remember, look again, I don't remember seeing any brassing on this one here. third pass. Monica Soaps, I should mention, she's been so far keeping her prices fairly steady. She has a price range. In other words, the soap I'm using right now I think is the $14.99, right around $15. And she has some that are cheaper than that, like running, was it $8.99, $7.99? I can't remember which one it is. As well as if you look, I guess you might say look a little bit further into her website, she has the ones where there's gift sets at various different prices. The one that I really like, as it goes for especially when it comes to value, uh, there's one that runs at $19.99 where you can get the soap, aftershave, pre-shave soap. In other words, you get quite a bit for your $20. And uh, those, um, I guess you might say the base for the soap is either the Hercules or Aquarius base for those uh, soaps. And of course, you know, she's got Buku sense to be choosing from which makes it pretty nice for me. I don't mind uh, a cologne scented soap from time to time, but uh, I lean more towards uh, other scents that maybe most people are not too terribly interested in, especially if they're interested in colognes. In other words, the tobacco, whether it's uh, pipe tobacco um, or if it's green tobacco, cigar, uh, scents like that, as well as uh, the uh, cappuccino, butter rum, stuff like that, you know, just other scents other than what you typically would find with a, uh, uh, a cologne, if you will. And this one here, the scent is, um, the way I figured out how to, maybe the best way to phrase it, is that it is a uh, lightweight scent, it's not a heavy scent. A heavyweight scent, but it's in other words, it's definitely present. It's not like necessarily lightly scented, as opposed to the weight of the of the scent is lightweight. It's not a heavy scent, so that might dictate for some folks what time of the year they want to wear. Yeah, how I am, I <laughs> it's whatever mood I'm in. That's what I'm going to be wearing. It doesn't matter what time of the year it is or anything like that. That's a pretty smooth shave. Post shave feel is pretty, pretty. Uh, how you say, moisturizing. My face doesn't feel dry. There's still quite a bit of residual slickness, for, at least for me. Pretty close shave. Definitely works for me. Now, for some that are, uh, how can you say, may have sensitive skin. And some of the scents may bother you one way or the other. Uh, if I remember right, she'll work with you on that sort of issue. In other words, uh, I guess you might say give her a holler, talk to her when she's open, back open for business, and she she can help direct you what direction you might want to go with the scent, what kind of soap base that you might want to lean towards. The uh, uh, right now she's. Um, closed. At least last time I checked was a couple of days ago. 
uh, she's had a death in the family. Her father died. But um, if you go to the website, it does allow you to uh, add some to your wish list, if you will. So that when she does open back up, you can go right back to it. Instead of having to hunt it down again. Got a little bit of stinging right there. That's a, it's probably the, close to the same spot yesterday. I was shaving with a Dovo uh, shave amp. And uh, after the shave, after I already put the Allen block on, got ready to use the Witch Hazel, had two weepers pop up right here. <laughs> after the shave, I guess you might say. Because I hadn't noticed it any other time until after I got done with the Allen block. Face is feeling pretty good. Even after the Allen block, that's one of the reasons why I use the Allen block as well as the um, uh, Witch Hazel because I tried using just the Allen block without the Witch Hazel and my face felt really dried out regardless what kind of soap I used and didn't like that feeling at all. But with the combination of the Allen block and the Witch Hazel, it seems like my face heals up quicker. In other words, the little nicks and cuts or whatever that you can't see. But the Allen block picks it up, you know, and there's a little bit of stinging here and there. Um, I, in other words, I really have place value on that, on what it does for you, those sort of issues. This one here helps with the moisturizer, in my opinion. It's not a heavy moisturizer. Just enough, I guess you might say, to take care of the Allen block. The dryness that it creates, at least for me. With um, some of the aftershaves, and I think this one here is the same way. It's been a while since I looked at it, but most of the time, most of these aftershaves will have a certain amount. Like this one here does have witch hazel, and I notice that some of them may actually have alum in it also. Don't see it listed here, but uh, some, no, some of the aftershaves are including the uh, alum in there. This one here... A little bit different look in that it looks like it has uh, maybe some silk type stuff in it. Uh, typically, in other words, it's clear and you can kind of see the you would see the oil up here at the top. I say it's oil scent. I'm not sure what it is. These are pretty inexpensive in comparison to what you may typically see, in that these are only running at ten dollars. So if you don't enjoy the burn, I guess you might say this might be a good option for you. There are some others that I know that are out there that are geared towards uh, sensitive skin. And uh, Stubble Buster would be one of them. Uh, the scent is, uh, in other words, they, everything is formulated in such a way to, in hopes not to irritate somebody's skin if you got a sensitive skin. For the me, for the most part, I may have some areas that may react to something. It doesn't bother me. In other words, I don't feel any burning. In other words, when I get some redness over here, I don't even notice it. Uh, it's been like that forever in a day. <laughs> but I don't ever notice the uh, any kind of burning over here or anything like that. There's only one aftershave that I have used. As a matter of fact, I used it just this week. Is the uh, uh, Sterling's uh, Wintergreen. Uh, I it and it, it doesn't turn my face red, but it feels like my face is turning red. <laughs> but I'm looking in the mirror and I can't I don't notice any redness or anything. But it sure does feel like it for I don't know maybe a couple of minutes for a short period of time. That's the only aftershave I have that does anything quite like that. Um, so far, in other words, I don't have any issues with uh, folks' aftershave so far. I have seen Lee. If you've uh, seen one of his uh, videos, I really felt for him because, in other words, he put the aftershave on and his face did turn red. He had a reaction to it. And that's uh, really unfortunate, especially when you just really like the scent and then the aftershave does that to you. At any rate, <laughs> go ahead and wrap this up. Good shave this morning. Great. Nice and soft. <laughs> anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe and smooth shaves to you.